ever wish that you could be an instant winner of a $1 million McDonald's Monopoly prize? Do you remember the feeling of peeling the Monopoly game ticket off the box of medium fries, hoping that your ticket would change your life, only to have the feeling of dissatisfaction sweep over you as you realize that you are the winner of a McChicken sandwich? Yet again, this is the story of how ex-cop Jerome Uncle Jerry Jacobson rigged the McDonald's Monopoly game to steal $24 million in prizes over a 12-year period. In 1987, McDonald's introduced a new game that would sweep the nation. McDonald's partnered with the game board makers of Monopoly to create a game of chance where tickets were attached to the containers of fries, burgers, and drinks for an opportunity to win up to $1 million in cash prizes. The game was simple. Collect game tickets representing Monopoly properties and win cash prizes. With a little luck, anyone, including yourself, could win. Or so you thought. Enter Jerome Jerry Jacobson, the man behind the elaborate scheme and the target of an FBI sting operation. An anonymous tip to an FBI agent will later implicate Jerry and expose how he was able to rig the system and distribute the winning game pieces to his friends and family. Jerry and his new choice friends, mob members, racketeers, and drug traffickers will go on to sweep up every large prize for the next 12 years. After losing his job as a police officer, Jerry started his new life in private security for Dittler Brothers in 1981. At Dittler Brothers, he would make a name for himself through his hard work and dedication to loss prevention. Jerry oversaw the production security detail for Dittler's client, Simon Marketing. The same Simon Marketing that was contracted with printing all of the Monopoly game pieces for McDonald's. Later being promoted to the head of security at Simon Marketing, Jerry would learn the inner workings of how the game came to life. He would observe the process of tickets being printed, the tamper-proof watermarks being affixed, and would even oversee the technicians creating the instant winner game pieces. Jerry had access to the vault and was tasked with distributing the tickets to the packaging factories across the country where the game pieces would later be distributed to the McDonald's restaurants. During an intake interview, Jerry would later tell investigators that it was my responsibility to keep the integrity of the game and get those winners to the public. In 1989, Jerry was overcome with the temptation to steal as he plotted on ways to keep the big prize game pieces. While transporting tickets to factories across the country, Jerry would often take multiple flights under the careful watch of an independent auditor. Aware that all of his activities were monitored, Jerry devised a plan to swap out big prize pieces with less valuable pieces in airport bathroom stalls where the auditor had no visibility of his actions. Knowing that keeping the game pieces for himself would draw unwanted attention, he began giving away and selling game pieces for profit, thus sowing the seeds of his future demise. A ticket to his stepbrother, a ticket to his butcher, he could make easy money and change someone's life in an instant. Having all of the big ticket prizes and receiving an accidental shipment of tamper-proof seals, Jerry had all he needed to continue his scheme. As time went on, Jerry gained a God complex, a feeling that he could change someone's life instantly by making them an instant million dollar prize winner. It was on a flight to Atlanta in 1995 where Jerry met mob-affiliated Gennaro Colombo of the infamous Colombo family. Colombo was involved in operating adult nightclubs underground casinos, and sports betting rings. It was Columbo who won the Dodge Viper, the beneficiary of a game piece from Jerry, who was featured in a McDonald's Monopoly commercial. The two became close, and through Jerry's connections, the scheme grew larger. Columbo introduced Jerry to his friends and family, giving him the moniker Uncle Jerry, the alias that would later be given to the FBI. The scheme continued to grow throughout the late 90s as Colombo introduced Jerry to many individuals who were eager to partake in the scam. In exchange for tickets, these individuals would pay Jerry cash kickbacks with Colombo acting as the middleman. Although most of the buyers of the tickets lived in the southeastern part of the United States, they would travel to random parts of the country claiming to have found the winning ticket in various states. They knew that if too many winners lived in the same area or found tickets in the same area, people would start asking questions. Three buyers in particular were the father, cousin, and best friend of Columbo's wife, Robin, all cashing in on $1 million prizes. One fateful day in 1998, Columbo and wife Robin were involved in a car wreck. Columbo was killed and survived by his wife. 
Robin speculated that the Colombo family believed that she intentionally caused the crash due to her deteriorating marriage to Colombo. The Colombo family initiated an investigation in an attempt to gain further information. As a result, Robin would never feel completely comfortable around her in-laws ever again and believed that the Colombo family would later seek revenge. With business booming and no middleman, Jerry set out to fill the void left by the late Colombo. Through a newly formed network, Jerry was introduced to two men who would take the scam to new heights, Richard Cordier and Andrew Glome, having different paths but a common goal, set out to recruit as many prospects as possible. Jerry had given the men over 18 big prize tickets, including 10 $1 million instant winner tickets. Over the next few years, this new network would clean up every top prize. In the year 2000, an anonymous tip had been made to the FBI detailing an elaborate fraud regarding the McDonald's Monopoly game and speculated that one of the $1 million winners had attained a ticket fraudulently. The tipster implicated a man named William Fisher, the father of mobster wife Robin. The tipster also credited a man named Uncle Jerry as the mastermind behind the scheme. With no way of knowing the identity of Uncle Jerry, the FBI began investigating William Fisher. After securing wiretaps, following check payment paper trails, and electricity records linked to Jacksonville, it was discovered that Fisher had not been honest about where he found the winning ticket and where he was living at the time. The FBI learned that his primary residence was located in Jacksonville, Florida, not New Hampshire as he had previously claimed. After further digging, the FBI began investigating other past winners and uncovered several others who had been dishonest with where they found their winning tickets. Coincidentally, most of the winners had their annual checks forwarded to addresses in the southeastern part of the United States, despite these winners having home addresses throughout the U.S. By this time, the FBI had 25 agents nationwide working the case dubbed Operation Final Answer. 20,000 phone numbers were tracked with 235 cassette tapes of recorded telephone conversations. The FBI were closing in on Uncle Jerry and were on the brink of discovering his identity. The wiretaps gave the FBI a lead on Uncle Jerry through Andrew Glom and another accomplice named Dwight Baker. Meetings were arranged to exchange cash for tickets for the last two prizes as the FBI began closing in. FBI agents began tailing Glom, Baker and Jacobson, gathering evidence as the FBI began formulating a plan to bring the operation down. An undercover sting operation was plotted and disguised as a commercial, capturing the reaction of the final winner as a recipient of a giant $1 million check. To Michael Hoover, the final winner's surprise, he was surrounded by FBI agents hidden amongst the camera crew. Hoover received his ticket from Glome and effectively became the last piece of the puzzle that brought down the scheme. More than 50 defendants, including Jerome, Uncle Jerry Jacobson, were rounded up and charged with mail fraud and conspiracy. The elaborate network quickly led to the one common denominator, Jerry Jacobson. Jerry faced 105 years in prison as the orchestrator of the fraud. Jerry eventually pled guilty and was sentenced to 15 years in prison and ordered to pay $12.5 million in restitution. As part of the plea deal, Jerry explained the details of the scheme at length and admitted to stealing over 60 game pieces worth $24 million over a 12-year span. As an act of good faith, McDonald's set out to right the wrongs of Jerry Jacobson. They committed to pay back every dollar that was stolen and announced a special promotion where the grand prize featured a $10 million prize. McDonald's vowed to do everything in its power to ensure that something of this magnitude would never happen again. So you may be asking yourself, why is this the first time I'm hearing this story? Well, the answer is simple. Jerry's trial began on September 10th, 2001, the day before the World Trade Center terrorist attacks. The attacks were given all of the media attention and the McDonald's Monopoly case flew under the radar. 